welcome, Mira Fralon. How are you? Thank you, Alec. Thank you for having me. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm very well. I mean, considering, you know. <laughs> All things considered, you're sa safely ensconced in your, your Hollywood Hills estate. Yes. <laughs> well, it's no, been a I'm pleasure kidding. getting to know you the past couple of days and working through your technological uh, oh my God. Uh, yes, it, issues. Challenge. <laughs> I'm challenged all the time, uh, uh, you know, technologically. I'm, I have a very analog mind. It's very strange. Uh, it just doesn't want to go there into that technological digital well, that's, a, that's okay. You're an, you're an actor, and I get that. <laughs> you know, it's so funny because, as everyone, knows, the the people who watch us on a regular basis know, we uh, dealing with JG every single time JG Hertzler has come on our stream, it's been a challenge to get him. You know, and even the last time when we we finally the second to last time had a process, he forgot the process, and we had to start over again. So. This time I was like, say hello to him. He's he's my you know soulmate. He's my he's my friend. <laughs> he's a great guy. He's he's from my tribe. I you know that happens to me, and that is a cause of a lot of turmoil at home because I always ask my husband, and he tells me, "But I told you that," and he you learned. How can you forget from day to day? And I don't know. I have no explanation. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, my girlfriend says it's cause I'm a boomer. She's like, you're a boomer. You just don't get technology. And I was like, <laughs> well, you know, uh, Steve Jobs was a boomer. That's true. He did pretty all right with that stuff. So was, so was Bill Gates. My so generation. So there's no excuse. It's, it's, there's no excuse. <laughs> um, so Mira, listen, you're most famous, obviously for your role as Delenn in Babylon five, but I think everyone always wants to know um, uh, uh, more about the actors that they 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 love and they've they've come to adore. Tell us a little about you know you're you're, you're from uh, Yugoslavia, yes. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your background, how you came over here. Uh, just tell us a, a little bit about the things that the average fan doesn't know about you. Right. Well, um, uh, so, you know, the fact that uh, people don't know um, um, much about me except Babylon 5 is also, you know, connected to the um, way that American audience sees uh, the rest of the world. Uh, uh, you know, you, th there is a term in America which is foreign films. And I was always wondering, what does that mean, foreign films? So that's everything that is un-American, that it's not American. Do you know how much of it, that foreign stuff, do you know how much of it exists in the world? Yeah, it's enormous. How much of that, that whole big, huge realm, you know? Uh, and in that realm, many things live, exist, happen, and so on and so forth. So, you know, I, uh, in, in my country, I starred in many, many movies and did a lot of theater and uh, I, uh, um, a lot of television series and a lot of TV pro uh, projects and so on. I mean, whoever is interested can go to my IMBD page. <laughs> um, okay, what happened? I, I wouldn't, uh, I, I, I don't feel that I can actually tell you the whole story. Um, and uh, uh, that's a, the, the, that's a he it's a heavy story. We had a war in our country. Yes. Um, the war that um, split Yugoslavia and actually uh, uh, made it disappear. So the country where I, that I was born in doesn't exist anymore. Um, so the country uh, went through a bloody uh, uh, war. Um, and uh, what came out of that war uh, were seven new countries, right, which are independent. Um, I was born in Zagreb, which is the capital of Croatia, uh, and I still have, um, um, you know, some connections in Serbia, Croatia, Bosnia. You know, after the war, I went back and did a couple of movies, uh, a couple of theater projects, uh, a TV series, and so on and so forth. Actually, when this whole pandemic thing happened, I was in Rijeka, which is a town in Croatia, where I um, I was involved in a theater project that I was um, 
uh, writing and acting in. Um, and then it, it, when it got canceled, I flew back to America. Um, uh, you know, the whole story of the war and what happened to people <laughs> who lived in that country, uh, who's, um, you know, who, who had connections in all these various parts of the country, and suddenly the country um, was broken up into pieces. You know, that story is a huge, big story that I'm actually trying to write. <laughs> you know, wow, about my experience, which I'm I'm trying to find the right way to uh, uh, you know place it out to to put it out into the world. I haven't found it yet, uh, but. Um, uh, you know, that's been on my mind, actually, since the moment I came to America, you know, to write about it. Um, and also, you know, things that are happening now in America, I mean, now we are in a very, very special moment. But even before that, with Trump's presidency and so on and so forth, you know, there are so many things that remind me very much and not in a good way of the uh, pre-war situation in my country. You know, the narrative of hatred, of uh, divisiveness, uh, of violence um, was there even before uh, the first you know, gun was shot. Um, and, and that created an incredible anxiety in, 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 in me and in people like me. Um, I didn't wanna participate in that. Um, and so I left, you know, it's, it seems so easy and so simple, but it wasn't, of course, you know, it's one of those stories where you, it's one of those uh, events that kind of breaks your life into, into ha two halves, you know, before and after. Um, and uh, the fact was that, you know, we had to begin, I came with my husband and we had to start from zero, a whole new life in a new language, in a new culture, with new rules and so on and so forth. Um, so that's the story I uh, want to write, which I wrote. <laughs> now is the matter of, of uh, you know, somehow uh, for it to get out, which is very hard to do. So let me ask you a geopolitical question. So for setting this the war aside now, the, the resulting countries, you said seven countries from Yugoslavia, mm -hmm. And there, obviously, there was all sorts of of ethnic strife right. that 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 right. resulted in this war. Do you think that now, because now we're thirty years away from twenty five right. years, right. thirty years away from the war? The war began in ninety one, so yes, almost thirty years. Almost thirty years. Do you think now that the uh, the region is more? stable than it was when it, Yugoslavia was one country with all this internal strife? Uh, I, can, I can't judge that because I don't live there anymore. I live in America now and I can't, I wouldn't be able to say, you know, to give a judgment of that. Gotcha. <laughs> you gotcha. know? Um, um, well, let me ask you this. So yeah. you, you arrived here when, what year did you arrive in the U S uh, late 91. It was, you know, end of November 91. And when did you get, the, when do you, were you cast in Babylon 5? Well, we shot the movie, uh, the pilot of Babylon 5, uh, the summer, in the summer of 91. So I was very wow. lucky. Wow. I was very lucky, actually. How did you, so how did, how did you get cast in Babylon 5? How did that all happen? It was happen? just an audition. You know, I got, I got this agent through, uh, uh, <laughs> Um, almost by chance, uh, um, and this agent, you know, sent me to a couple of auditions. It was one of my first auditions, really, and so that was very interesting. Um, and the audition happened in New York. When we emigrated from the former Yugoslavia, we uh, landed in New York. New York was always I I, I was there a couple of years be before uh, the war started and so on, and completely fell in love with the city and thought, this is it, this is where I wanna live, this is the city of you know diversity and it's like living in a world. Uh, um, it was, it was uh, fascinating to me. And you know, when, when we were thinking, like, what do we do? Where do we go? How do we resolve this? You know, New York was on my mind. And I thought, yeah, 
That's it. You know, when I was there as a tourist a couple of years before the war, I never, I didn't have the, the, the guts. I didn't, I was not brave enough to stay. And I had a very successful career at home. I was a member of the theater. I was in a TV series. I was called to do you know, movies and so on and so forth. Things were happening and I, I, I could not resolve this in myself. So it took a war to get me out, <laughs> um, which is interesting. But um, so um, your question, uh, uh, yes, a random audition. I forgot about it. They never called back. You know, it was put somewhere in some pocket, forgotten. And then by chance, uh, my husband had a screening of a documentary that he made at VGA. Um, and he was invited to be at that screening. And my agent said, um, why don't you check it out, you know? Um, and so I did, you know, check out LA. I wanted to see what, what, what it was all about. And when I was there, my agent was smart enough to call the Babylon 5 people, or at least I think she was. I have no idea. I forgot. It was a long time ago. But somehow it happened that she calls me and says, Nira, they want to see you again since you're already in L.A. And so they saw me and I had another audition and yet another audition, a couple of you know, auditions, uh, um, and then a screen test, and I got the job. And who, who are your auditions with? You know, but but I always think, what if I didn't accompany Gordon just as his wife, you know, just as a, you know, <laughs> this is a package, you know, what if I wasn't there? Would, would they fly me over from New York? I, I don't know, you know? So it's, you know, it's always, it's, it's always in life. These tiny little things, these tiny little events, then then connect and you know create your path. <laughs> yeah. Who, who uh, so who did you audition for when you uh, auditioned in L.A.? Um, um, uh, the casting director was Mary Jo Slater, and and the director of the of the pilot, Richard Compton. Uh, I met Joe Straczynski when I came to Los Angeles, when I did uh, uh, the audition in Los Angeles. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So uh, did you become friendly with John Iacovelli at all? Oh, yeah, of course. Isn't yeah. he awesome? He is awesome. He is, yeah. He's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful spirit and a beautiful man. Yeah, he, he was working as our production designer when we were in L.A., um, before we got before we got sued by CBS and Paramount, um, we I don't, I don't, sued? wait. Oh yeah, oh, we did, I should have talked prep. Yeah, so when we came out with we came out with our short film in 2014, and then we raised it was so successful we raised a million dollars to make a full length feature film of it, of the short film, and um, we released the first scene from it. And uh, that first scene was so good that CBS and Paramount sued us because they didn't want us to make the movie before they came out with Star Trek Discovery. So, um, and long story short, we hired a great law firm and it went on for a year and they finally settled uh, with, with us. So we still get to make two more uh, short films. So anyway. right. but before we were sued, Johnny Acavelli was working as our production designer and um if you uh, for a short time, Curtis Lasseter was working as our construction coordinator. I don't know if you knew Curtis. He was the construction coordinator for who converted your the sound stages there in I guess was it Sun Valley? It was there. Yeah, Sun Valley. Right? Sun Valley. He, yeah. So um, so yeah. So we have a bunch of people, but John was awesome, and he's just so artistic. He's, and, he's a theater man, you know. I yeah. I we yeah. connect on so many levels, but on that also, you know, we we're. we're old theater people. <laughs> yeah. You ever been to his house? Yes. I've been yeah. <laughs> he, he actually, when, 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 um, when we did, uh, we did a version of uh, an adaptation of Sophocles Antigone in uh, Los Angeles, uh, in Hollywood. Uh, and, and we invited, I mean, we, 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 you know, we, we worked with, with Johnny Acquavelli on that and he made an absolutely unbelievable set. I'm sure he did. 
he did the show. I mean, it, it, it's so fantastic. He's, he's so talented and so wonderful. So here you are in the U.S. less than a year, and you get th th this role. And, of course, it was for the pilot. Um, what it, so tell us about working on the pilot. I mean, if you remember in the pilot, uh, I was covered uh, with latex from uh, head to toe, right? So there was always, you know, with Babylon 5, there was always this exhilaration. Yes, a job and a, and a great role and so on. But <laughs> there's this other element, you know, <laughs> you can actually see me. Uh, so it was in a way like working incognito, you in know, in a way, in a way, right? Um, uh, the pilot was was disturbing to me. I mean, it 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 was, you know, I, I I had to adjust and adapt in so many ways because um, as an actor, you work with your face, and and somehow you that <laughs> suddenly you don't have that face. So. Um, it's a huge adjustment and it's very challenging. And we all, I mean, I always say, and I, I really, really mean it, that um, uh, the person who taught me the most uh, about that was Andreas Katsoulas, mm. who, you know, who came when we were doing the pilot and, and he saw me kind of miserable and, and ah. hot and ah, disturbed by this. You know, he told me, Mira, think of it. Theater began in the old country because he was Greek, so we are we are so <laughs> we, are, we are we are neighbors. Uh, so he said, "You you remember theater started with masks. Try to find freedom in the lack of freedom, you know, in that frame that's given to you. Uh, um, it can be liberating." see it as liberating. So it's all about the point of view. How, how do you turn your, your perspective and, and, you know, and when you do, then you can function in a completely different way. Yeah. And he did it so beautifully in Babylon 5. I, I think he is one of, he is certainly one of my two or three favorite characters in all of uh, television history. Hmm. Um, I think, uh, 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 yeah, I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, he, it was so good. His role. I mean, you were all, listen, you were all amazing. I was really, it's still one of my two or three favorite TV shows of all time. And, um, and it was amazing. I, I think the show was great because it brought to us actors that we really never heard of, including yourself. No one really knew Andreas Consulis. I mean, he was the one armed man in the fugitive. That was, the, the one other big thing or Peter Jurassic had a small part on Hill street blues, but you know, basically he was still a, a, a relative unknown. I mean, Bruce Boxline was the only person really, I, I think that, that had a name amongst uh, uh, television, uh, you know, any, any fandom. And it, meanwhile, you guys, and a lot of certainly is credited with Joe Straczynski because of his amazing writing, but it's just, um, it, it is an eminently watchable show to go back and binge five seasons again, because you, you all turned in such amazing performances and had such rich, wonderful, meaty stuff to dig into. Um, at least that's the way it appears to us. And Good. <laughs> how, did, how does it feel? How did it feel to you? You know, I think we were a good bunch of people and a good, good team. I really do. I think uh, uh, kind of an exceptional team, really. We, we, we came, all of us, I mean, each of us came from such a different, um, such a different place, different tradition, different culture. I mean, you know, for example, me. Right. Um, I mean, from Jerry Doyle, who used to be on Wall Street. Yeah. Uh, for, uh, to me, who, who, who came from Eastern Europe and, you know, uh, and, and I, I don't know. It's, it was uh, to Jason Carter, to, you know, so many different people, different actors, but different people, different personalities that somehow made it into this amalgam you know of mystery and magic <laughs> that was that was that was deep <laughs> no but really i think the combination of all of us was what what was 
really important for the show, you know, apart, of course, from, from the brilliance of Joe's writing. Right? Yeah, it's such a wonderful ensemble cast. It, re it really is. Um, and it was amazing how you would lose someone and another person would step in and add a, um, add different character to the show. And it, and it, the show never lost a beat. You, you felt like, you know, uh, I think that was one of the things that was, was amazing. Um, right. How, how the show uh, just kept adding characters that were right. just I mean, wonderful. For me also, you know, okay, they were all uh, uh, good actors and, and, and wonderful people to work with. But the fact that we actually stayed connected after the end of the show, that's a little miracle. Because, you know, I... <laughs> I have a long, long uh, career in movies and in various projects and so on. I've never stayed in touch with the whole cast on any of my projects in Yugoslavia, in America, anywhere that I worked. It's really unusual. And that is, that is something to cherish and to be grateful for. And I really am. And I'm so glad that Pat... Claudia and I are doing this thing together. But uh, it's fantastic how adaptable people are. I mean, I'm just, I'm in awe. I mean, I'm in awe of Pat, who, is, who, is, who put this together in such a short time. And, you know, I'm, I'm also, I'm teaching uh, at a film school, um, uh, which is beginning on Tuesday, and I'm oh. doing my classes on Zoom. And I'm, you know, I've, I've been teaching for a while. Um, I cannot even imagine it. But obviously, it's going to happen. And on, on Tuesday, I'll be, you know, talking to students like this. It's it's a huge adjustment. And for, for people like me who, who, as I said, have an analog mind, it's a, it's a tricky thing. Um, you know, there's so much animosity that one feels that you have to kind of get over, you know, and just adapt, I guess, adapt. Well, and I think, listen, I think we, uh, everyone is getting used to this. Certainly, I mean, everyone's talking about Zoom. And it's funny because, you know, it's a, it's a technology that's been around for 10 years. I don't know how long it's been around. But now it's, everyone knows what Zoom is. You know that. So it's an old technology and, and now. Oh, yeah. I was using Zoom 10, I want to say 10 years ago. Maybe I, I but yeah, it, it's been, it's been around for a while. And um, so, but now everyone's doing it. And, but now classes are moving on. I mean, it's not just this convent, this little convention you're doing online. It's classes, education. I think we're, we're just going to learn that this is just a new way to do things and it will become the new normal. I mean, it already has become a new normal, even before this. So, you know, I, I feel that this, this situation, this pandemic, this virus is actually accelerating and deepening all the trends that have already existed. You know, I, whether we are talking about on a, on a micro level, on a personal level, or, you know, the global level, the macro level. Um, I mean, Everything you know that already existed is now getting stronger. So all these trends. So if you were anti, you know, if you had trouble with socializing with people, <laughs> it's gonna get worse. <laughs> you know, um, so it's 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 tough. It's tough. I I mean, I'm okay being alone. Um, I I like being alone. Uh, because I like I like where I am and I like uh, my books and I have so much stuff to do and you know I have to figure out how to and what to do with my book and so on and so forth. I mean I have so much. I've never felt busier than than right now. It's it's oh it's, that's fantastic. No, I don't know if it's fantastic. I I no, but well, I mean busier being in, busy is being no, busy is great. Right. Okay. Yeah. Busy in, in terms of like trying to get it, trying to learn, trying to adjust, trying to adapt. You know, it's not busy doing, you know, as people love to say, what you love. I don't know if I love getting into, you know, intricacy of technology, but I have to do it. If I want to function, if I want to stay afloat, right? As we yeah. all do. I mean, it's a huge, huge, huge adjustment in a, in a completely unpredictable 
situation. That 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 is that that is true. It it, it is unpredictable. Um, what film school are you uh, uh, teaching for? New York Film Academy. Oh yeah, sure. I know, I know. I I, I was a guest speaker there when I li when I was in L.A. Um, I mean, you you live there. I mean, if you lived in Toluca Lake, that's the that's the building. That's right there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I I don't know if you know Mike Demerit. He's he's one of the other, uh, but he was a he was a first AD on Star Trek, and uh, he was working with us at the time. So. Um, so, uh, he was in a me, he was in meetings with myself and John Yacovelli. So, um, but he's teaches there. And, uh, so yeah, that's right around the, oh, I miss that area. It's such a great, it's such a great area. It's so, a good area. Yeah. <laughs> um, so are you, are you, are you still acting? Is that still something now? Obviously right now we're all shut down. I, I just in, in, in uh, a city in Rijeka where, where we were, uh, where I was working on this theater project uh, show. Right. Um, I, I did a movie in Serbia uh, in November, um, you know, um, I mean, I did, I did a couple of video games here. That's a new thing that's been happening. Did you? <laughs> right. Um, um, I did a cool one, actually, um, an underwater game, uh, you know, where, where, with research that included research in the way of, you know, it was a beautiful thing. I, 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 I have this uh, prejudice that games are violent, you know, all of them are violent, which is, of course, a stupid prejudice. Uh, so, no, not all of them are violent. <laughs> gotcha. And you worked on um, you worked on Mark Zikri's Space Command project, which a lot of my fan, a lot of our fans know because it's another kickstarted science fiction project, yeah. very similar, to, you know, in scope to what we did. How was your time doing that? Because that was a ultra low budget. Uh, it's weird. You know, it's one of those things where, again, you know, we were doing something online. I had to shoot myself, uh, and so on and so forth. I mean. It's, it's, I don't know what to think about it, you know, this new way of doing things. I mean, I'm thinking, okay, you know, why even go to a cinematography school, for example, right? Why do people know how to light a person's face if we're all going to do it by ourselves, you know, in our kitchens and our, I don't know, toilets? I mean, I, I don't know. It's the end of hmm, professionalism, maybe? You know, there is there is that element. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's the, the to total democratization of everything, which is yes, that's yes, exactly on one hand. But on the other hand, what happens to expertise? What happens to knowledge? What happens to skill? You know. Well, I think you know. Listen, we all have. Um, there was an interesting. Um, there was a Hollywood writer who a few months ago came out with a very a tweet that w went viral. And and he um, he basically said, look, he said, I am asked all the time by would you know want to be writers, why to be want to be screenplay writers? How do I sell a script in Hollywood? And he said, my answer to you is you don't. You have a better chance of becoming an NFL linebacker than you do of selling a script in Hollywood. He said, now he said, what you do is you go make a film. And he said, and everyone can make a film because we all have this. And it's an HD camera. So go and make a three minute film. He said, and show it to everyone. And it's probably going to be bad. Uh, but you're just going to show it to your family because you're going to be embarrassed. And then go out and make a five minute film and then make another one. And then another one. And he said, and you're going to write it. You're going to direct it. You're going to edit it. You're going to start it. You're going to, you're going to do these things over and over and over. And you're going to, your creativity is going to come out and you're going to start understanding what filmmaking is all about. And I think that's really, that's true. I, Recently, the uh, director, I don't know if you saw it, the director of the John Wick movies, he, he, took a, he took the new iPhone 10 and made like this, it was like a two-minute movie about an epic snowball fight. And it looked like it was shot on, you know, big cinematographic cameras. It was just amazing. I went to, uh, I went to the movie theater to see uh, Steven Soderbergh's movie uh, a couple of years ago that he shot on his phone, you know just on a regular phone. It looked weird, uh, I have to say, but it worked. I mean, it was watchable, right? So, yeah, no, that's that's all possible. I don't know. I'm, maybe all film schools should be, or theater schools should just be 
disbanded. <laughs> you know? Well, I, I don't think, you know, I, I, experts in everything, right? Well, I think there's a difference between democratization, which is good, and expertise, which needs to be valued. Um, everyone may be able to it's a slippery slope we are at right now. Yeah, because just because everyone can do it doesn't mean everyone's going to get an Academy Award, mm -hmm. right? Or get nominated. I, I, the the cream will still rise to the top. You still, you know, not everyone's going to pay for your whole movie made on your phone, right? So right. we'll see. Well, tell me outside of, uh, about so Babylon Five was five years of your life. Um, which is a huge piece of, 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 of time for an actor. Tell us, what is the one other um, film, TV show so, what, that you would like your fans to see that you were in? You said, oh, you know, I did this, what? And it was well, amazing. I, I, was for, I was on Lost for four years. Uh, oh, that's right. How can I forget uh, I was on an episode. I only watched the first two seasons. That a couple of years ago. I mean, like maybe two years ago. Uh, on an Amazon show called um, um, Just Add Magic. I played, I was a recurring role for a couple of seasons. I played, <laughs> uh, 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 I think actresses uh, and women in general are going to love that. I mean, I played a woman who doesn't age. Which was oh, wow. Amazing. So everybody around me, was changing, you know, because because uh, the, the, there were a lot of kids in that show. Uh, so the kids were growing up and then, you know, somebody else would play those kids when they grew up. Only I was always me because I was this magical being that never aged. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe I, maybe maybe a, a, a drop of that magic fell on my head. <laughs> we'll see. How, how was your time on Lost? But I'm lost. Yeah, it was, you know, um, <laughs> an actress gave me an advice. She told me to, uh, when, whenever I, uh, whenever things get complicated, uh, the right thing to say is, I learned a lot. So, I learned a lot. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. That's like saying... I loved being in Hawaii. I loved, loved, loved uh, getting to know. I really, I'm grateful for that experience to be, to be able to 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 see those islands from within. I know that Pat loves Hawaii, and I, I mean, I could live there tomorrow. I, 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 and which island was it filmed on? Onoahu, Onoahu, right? But yeah. in the you know, but but when you do it, uh, uh, you know, when you're there with a TV show, then you go to these places where you would never be able to go, you know, you would never be able to enter. So we 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 were in, in completely. I never knew that Oahu, the main island, had so many wild places. You know, um, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. yeah. Beautiful. yeah. So um, what? Just tell us, tell us because. You know, not everyone understands the process of acting and what acting what acting actually is. But aside from the craft, mm. there's also the process. Like, okay, I, I sometimes we hear from Star Trek actors who talk about it on stage and they'll say, Yeah, I had to be in the makeup trailer at 5 a.m. every morning and I sat for three hours while they put on my Klingon makeup. You know, and people go, What three hours? It's like, yeah, three hours, you know, in the makeup chair that, every single day mm -hmm. for seven seasons, you know. Um, what it's, was it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy to get up at 2.30, mm. which I, I was doing when I was shooting Babylon 5, 2.30, so that I could be on the set at 4. Um, and, they, you know, I had to be ready at 7.00. And then all these human actors would come and be ready in like yeah. 10 minutes, you know. But I have to say, we had a really lovely alien trailer and the quotation marks because we were all very much into music. Uh, Bill Mumy is a musician, a fabulous oh, yeah. musician. Um, uh, Peter Jurassic is, is incredibly musical and has fantastic taste. I... I, you know, I sang and had bands and, 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 and I, I, you know, music is, I don't know, the, the essential, the, is the essential 
peace in my life has always been. So what that it was music time for from four to seven in this complete peacefulness of that makeup trailer. We were, you know, everybody would come with their um, homemade, you know, compilation tapes in those days, tapes. I still have them. <laughs> I still, <laughs> I'm not, I can't throw them away. You know, this, this, Billy's Billy's tape. Bill Mumy uh, would make me tapes. Uh, um, Minbari uh, morning music or usually uh, <laughs> Minbari. Uh, uh, you know, seven o'clock uh, or hour and so on and so forth. It was it was beautiful. So we were exchanging music. We were we were listening to music. We were just. It was a good. These three hours were actually a really nice, soothing, smooth. Um, transition into into you know work, right? Yeah. So I I I, I have only good memories of these uh, early hours where, where when we were the only ones on the set. There was something magical. There was something really powerful in it. You know. So tell me, um, which was was it harder to have the full season one prosthetic or the season two part where they had the you had the little ring around your head. Easier and much more comfortable to have um, to have my hair and to have you know my 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 skull, <laughs> you know, aired, um, then covered with latex. Um, you know, it, it's it's a lot. It's a lot to deal with. Uh, um, you know, a lot of discomfort. But I mean, you know, that's acting. There's always discomfort that you have to overcome. I mean, that's kind of the, the basic thing in acting, you know. Everything works against you. You know, there are people standing around, there are there are there, there, are, there are these intrusions and so on and so forth. It's too cold, it's too hot, it's too uncomfortable, and so on and so forth. But you have to be on and you have to be truthful, and that's it. <laughs> that's kind of it. That's what it's all about. So to uh, deal with discomfort and to be able to overcome it, it's it's actually the, the, the kind of the basic challenge of acting. The only thing is that, you know, when you play an alien on a TV show, then it becomes a little bit more pronounced and there is more of this discomfort. But, you know, everybody has to deal with, I think, every every actor. What, um, what was... <laughs> what was the set like on Battle Babylon Five? I mean, Fun. what was the? It was great. You know, um, Doug Netter, who was our producer, I remember that he said one day, uh, uh, and I and somehow it 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 it, it, it I remembered it. Um, he said, "I don't want screamers on my set," and I remembered that sentence so many times afterwards where people would scream, insult actors, humiliate oh. actors. Really? Uh, scream and shout and be be uh, really hurtful to people. You know, I was thinking, oh my God, where wow. is that matter? Where is that producer who, who would say, stop it, keep it down? I mean, that's the essence, you know. I, I cannot stand uh, um, these, you know, these these crazy sets. I mean, they're they're really detrimental to 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 me. <laughs> I think to everybody. Um, oh, I, I would think so. You know, drama, drama. You know, I, there's. I've been on these sets many many times. You know, where where people break down and shout and scream and there are fights. Oh. We never had that on Babylon 5. Not once. Not once. I, I cannot remember one time. I mean, I, I, I would, I don't know if Pat can or Claudia can. I cannot remember one single time that that happened. You know, it was peaceful. It was, it was friendly. It was kind. It was respectful. Nice. It needs to be. I Well, I, listen, my experience is quite limited, but uh, certainly that's, that's what we strive for in our little independent production is, um, uh, you know, everyone respects everyone. There's, there's no, there's no re reason for that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can get upset at things when things don't go right. Certainly people get upset, but, um, yeah, yeah there's, and certainly you can't, 
I'm a, I, I, I'm amazed because you certainly can't be that way with actors because <laughs> You know, because only I, I would have just, I'm like, look, I know what they're trying to do. It ain't going to help if you're, <laughs> you're screaming at someone. Right. You know, that, that's not going to help them get where they need to go. You, you basically, it's impossible to work, right? It's, it's just, uh, um, you have to be at peace with yourself in order to, to do this thing called acting. You know, you're not, you, you, there's nothing's going to happen. Right. So, yeah. yes, I agree with that, but um, the reality is different. And um, so in that way, Babylon 5 was also a, a, a nice place to work, a really nice place. I wish, you know, I always, I was always fascinating in every movie that I made. Um, you know, being on location is such a powerful thing. Um, and it makes you more truthful somehow. You know, it, 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 it doesn't allow you to be fake. Uh, because there's a, the real tree, the real rock, the real sea, you know. So, but we on Babylon 5 were constantly in front of the green screen. You know, there was no truth. We had to keep it inside, right? There was, you know, as you know, <laughs> it, that's science fiction, right? Um, yeah. Only afterwards you kind of realize what you reacted to because you didn't see it while you were. Right, there. right, right, right. So imagination, you know, you had to use your imagination a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It was it, For what we did back in uh, with our first short film, we shot on green screen, but there was no reacting to it. It was basically interviews. It was documenting interviews. Just happened to shoot on a green screen. This time we shot on a set. It didn't really change. It didn't change because you weren't interacting with necessarily with the set, but um, yeah, I know some of the, the things that you did, especially was it, which season was it? Was a the season two finale when you're in the in the atrium and uh, and everyone looks up and sees uh, uh, sees Kosh, um, and that was just a you could just tell you're just looking. There's a lot of CG in this scene. Okay. Yeah, and everyone. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you saw it in the end, you know, the, the 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 actual product, and you thought, oh, my God, okay, wow. I imagined it completely differently. <laughs> Somehow it worked, but <laughs> what did Well, I it worked for you. Yeah, I, 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 exactly. You create what you need, right? What you need for to get where you need to go. I guess. Yeah, that's wonderful. What was the – okay, so what was the – tell us – the most fun you ever had on the set at Babylon Five. Where was there any one time where you were just like could could not keep a straight face? You were laughing so hard. You were having so much fun. And who? Every time I listened to Jerry Doyle, I would I would you know be on the floor and you know I and and I wished so many times stop it, Jerry, because I I'm laughing and enjoying your wit, Claudia too, Claudia and Jerry. There, you know, back and forth was. Phenomenal, hysterical. I mean, it should have been a TV series of its own, you know. <laughs> um, uh, I was, I was, I was playing catch up, you know. I, 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 because uh, it it goes so fast. Uh, those were fast thinking people. I mean, uh, so uh, uh, you know, a lot of slang. And I, with with all my you know classes of English. <laughs> in the uh -huh. They weren't teaching you all oh, of that. What? What? What did she say? Why is it funny? Wait, you know, it's 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 tricky. <laughs> yep. Right. I, I I can I can no I can imagine I, I, as for someone who wasn't raised speaking the language. Uh, At one point, um, uh, I don't know what it was. It was Christmas time, I think, and uh, somebody mentioned. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And I said, what? And Rick Big says, you don't know who Rudolph the Red-Nosed Red Reindeer is? Unacceptable. And next day, he brought me, uh, I don't know, seven, uh, like a, a bunch of uh, videos, of, of DVDs, uh, you know, VHS cassettes in those times. And th that those were the classics of Christmas, you know, films. 
uh, American Christmas. Right. You know, Christmas Soul Christmas, Christmas, Charlie Brown Christmas. And had to go through, you know, so, so, oh my God, uh, Frosty the Snowman. Frosty the Snowman, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Not ready. I mean, I don't remember, but there the was Grinch. The Grinch was he said, Okay, I don't want to talk to you be, uh, unless you see all of them. You have to educate yourself. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's how I became American. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had good teachers that, that insisted that you learn the classics. Absolutely. The basics. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 that's fantastic. Um, so, uh, so tell us. Um, you know, uh, the, the sad thing is you've lost so many of your friends. Oh. It, it's just amazing how your cast has just been devastated uh, by loss. Um, and uh, is there is there w one that you were particularly close with that you lost that you, tr you know, that your heart aches for on? Uh I mean, I, I, I counted Rick Biggs uh, and Andres uh, into the the very very uh, close circle of my friends, and there was another actor also who who, uh, who who was my friend, my my close friend, and that's Tim Choate. Oh played, yeah, Andres, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, he, I mean, you know. Unimaginable, uh, incredible. I, I, you can't wrap your mind around it. Um, you know, but they're I, here. I, I, they're I, here. I, here, you know, they, they, huh, what a, what, what beautiful, beautiful people. Yeah. I really, I actually saw a meme yesterday with Tim, with Tim Choate's character, with Zatras, like, you know, a meme on Facebook with the photo. And, and it was, I was like, wow, that's, kind of wild that <laughs> it's a it's a meme on uh on facebook but uh i i think babylon 5 has it's so interesting because it has such um uh such an enduring quality that science fiction fans can come to it later and uh you know i i know when fans come to it now the the visual effects can seem dated um because they were so cutting edge at the time but uh the the story and the characters are just um, are unbelievable. It it really it it does not it, it does not lose any of its grandeur in the fifth time you watch the series. That's very nice to hear. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's wonderful. Um, so uh, how was it working with Bruce Boxliner? Because you had a lot of work with Bruce. Right. I mean, Bruce is a very very you know super professional, super kind, super civilized, super nice. I enjoyed every moment, uh, and uh, again we stayed in touch. And you know, it's 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 wonderful to 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 be able to work with such people. You know, and I'm I'm I I feel very lucky. <laughs> so tell tell everyone out there as an actor, what uh, what is the thing that you you appreciate the most in your fellow actor? Hmm. Um. Being present, listening to me, seeing me, uh, feeling me, you know, uh, letting me feel you, you know, that kind of thing, you know, the real, real truthful uh, um, contact, um, you know, and with some people that's so easy because they let you in because they're, they're open, you know, and they're you know they let themselves be vulnerable and that's where the 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 you know the the gold is so to say right some people have a tough tougher time uh to do that um and you know you have to struggle to kind of get in and sometimes there's nothing that happens with other, with with the other actor just nothing and then you kind of you use your imagination you know it's like working with the Green screen, right? You just <laughs> right. I mean, that's also your duty, you know. You cannot, but I mean, you know, a good actor can lift you up, and a bad actor can put you down. I mean, you know, I whenever I worked with Andreas, for example, I felt lifted up. I felt he brought he he saw something that I didn't see before when I was working on the scene. He he's you know he. 
had such an interesting point of view as an actor and he brought something up and I would glue myself to that and then it would grow and it would become a scene. So these are these are these beautiful moments that we all, you know, love and, and kind of, you know, live for, you know, search for. And, you know, sometimes you find them and sometimes you don't and that's cool too. <laughs> well, I have to think that um, doing a, a play especially where you're doing multiple performances mm -hmm. that that is both a, a an exquisite challenge but also i got to believe that it's incredibly rewarding to find those different the same scene happening different ways maybe on different nights that that you're doing the performance right that that's that, that that's an interesting i mean i you know my one of my teachers uh, at the, at the academy of dramatic arts where i went to, uh, as a young person um um said you know that playing in a in a in a being in a theater performance every night that every night you uh, it's a good image uh, <laughs> so as if the performance each night is a chest of drawers and you open the drawer and you know, search for something in it. And you you open one drawer, there's nothing in it. Open the other drawer, nothing in it. Open the third drawer, nothing in it. And then the fourth drawer, oops, there it is. You know? <laughs> I mean, you don't know if you're going to find it or not. Um, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. And you kind of have to live with, with, with it. Um, you know, I haven't done much theater lately. Uh, um, I, I, I went back to Croatia and did a play, a Bergman's play, Ingmar Bergman's play, um, uh, three years ago. And uh, mm, But just to have theater in my life on some level is important to me because that's how I started. It started with theater for me. There's a question. Uh, Edward Louis says, uh, has a question here. It says, what in your personal life can you, you relate to your character of Delenn? I, I mean, I'm guessing he's saying, what what did you find in your personal life to bring to bring to that character? Oh, so much, so much, and also uh, you know, Joe uh, being a wonderful writer that he is, um, kind of included, incorporated very, very, very elegantly, very um, um, smoothly, uh, uh, you know, pieces of of let's say me or my life or my personal experience into the role. Um, um, I don't know, her, her whole, you know, the combination of vulnerability and toughness, for example. <laughs> um, the other thing on, on just the story level, um, you know, in my country, I tried to be, let's say, a bridge, right, between the, these peoples who went to war. Uh, um, Obviously, you know, when there is a war, all bridges are put down and destroyed and walls are built, right? So, you know, I'm a bridge person, not a wall person, just to be clear, you know, in any country. So that particular kind of my role in that whole Yugoslav, uh, you know, disaster was very similar to, to, to the storyline that Joe created uh, um, for Dylan. Uh, trying to be this bridge, this 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 link between uh, um, between uh, uh, you know groups that that cannot live together, something like that. I think I think there is a lot, <laughs> you know, in 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 Dylan that I can respond to. What was the character that you uh, that you enjoyed the relationship between Dylan and this character the most? Because there were some interesting. I mean, I like for example, I was like, I was always fascinated. I always thought the the relationship between you and Ducat was fascinating. I was like, oh, uh, that's, uh, right, that's the such a great, wow, that's that was really interesting. Actor. He was a good actor. Oh, he yeah. had such presence. Yes, it's uh, almost like he said, "I." He's one of those actors that the less he said, the more powerful he was. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was good. He was good. No, there were there were so many interesting um, guest stars on our show, uh, from Michael York to uh, Theodore Theodore Bikel, 
for example. Yes, yes. No, so many. Um, but um, I, you know, I, I, each of them, each of the people that that I work with, uh, brought something completely different and brought something completely different in me. And so you're grateful for these different things that people draw out of you. You know. So uh, I can't say. I mean, I love working with Bruce. It was so easy, so smooth. Uh, uh, you know, I I loved working with Bill Mooney. Um, those were my partners. For example, I don't even know. I mean, Andreas, you know, I we almost never met, you know, on the, we never had anything to do together. But when we did, it was always, I mean, it impressed me so much each and every time. You know, Andreas was just like, whoa, you know. Um, with Peter, unfortunately, I had so little to do. Um, but of course, every single time was pleasure, um, you know, but but I never really, at so little did I work with Claudia, with Pat, almost almost nothing. It's interesting, interesting how, how you know, we were there, but never really, you know, in a scene together. Right, right. A different uh, way of, of being close, I would say. Right? Got, gotcha. Well, listen, we want to thank you so much for, for, for being here tonight um, and sharing with everyone because you have so many fans who love your work, myself included. And, <laughs> and, and yeah, I'm a huge fan. So thank you so much. I'm going to, uh, um, once again, I just want to make sure everyone knows um, about the, the event that's coming up this weekend, B5 events, and it's the Women of Babylon 5. Um, you can go to b5events.com. And uh, it's an all kind of an all day from uh, nine thirty in the morning to three thirty or so in the afternoon. Uh, you get a ticket. It's, a, it's just like a virtual convention, and you're going to get to hear from all of the women. And uh, I'm looking, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I hope ho hope everyone here is, and uh, it's a chance for you all to get to know all of the women a little more. And um, please be happy and safe and healthy and and. Be happy and healthy and safe. <laughs> yes, all, all the all the important things, and uh, we'll look forward to catching up with you, um, catching up with you again, and you and and maybe we'll get you and Pat and Claudia on our show at some point. Uh, oh, lovely, that would be lovely. Yeah, I'd lo I'd love to have you all because uh, it, it's some. Now I don't know Claudia, but Pat, uh, I I met Pat at. Um, did you ever do anything with SciFest? The Los Angeles One Act Play Festival, Science Fiction Play Festival. David, David <laughs> no, D. About it. It's such a great idea. Oh, it was wonderful. A lot of yeah, it was wonderful. And uh, that's how I met Pat. I'm I'm not sure if Pat was in it or was just friend of Dick, but that's how I met Pat. And I just Pat's just a wonderful soul who I really, I really, I, I really enjoy. Wholeheartedly. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Well, listen, thank you so much. Thank um, you, Alec. It was a pleasure. We wish you well. Um, and all of you have a wonderful time and, and stay safe. Yes, to everyone. Thank you, everyone. We'll see everyone and we'll see everyone the next time. Bye-bye. Right. Okay.